With unmatched prowess, they reign as the supreme hunters of the avian realm. Masters of stealth and precision, destined to seek and vanquish their prey in silence. Across the annals of time, humans have forged an unbreakable bond with these majestic predators. So why do humans trust them, and how fast can these speed demons truly fly? Find out today on Laugh Pack. Speed is a powerful thing. In the comics, speed can make a lot of characters look overpowered. And the Flash is one of those characters. He is a speedster in the DC Comics world. His command of his powers allows him to perform what has come to be known as the Infinite Mass Punch. Now to accomplish this, the Flash runs just under the speed of light. And per the laws of relativity, his mass increases exponentially until he reaches the relativistic mass of a white dwarf star. This punch is so strong, it could take down Superman. Well, although traveling at the speed of light is out of the question for all living creatures, speed is no stranger to the animal kingdom. A selfish can swim at 68 miles per hour. Cheetahs can run up to a whopping 75 miles per hour. Yeah, even the golden eagle can fly up 200 miles per hour. Wow! But there is one creature that can leave all others in the dust. And that is the Peregrine Falcon. Found in every continent except Antarctica, Peregrine Falcons have 19 different subspecies that come in different sizes and colors. But of all the different versions of peregrine falcons, they all have one thing in common. They all look amazing in the air, which is just one reason why they have held such great cultural significance throughout time. Peregrine falcons have earned a legendary reputation for their exceptional performance in falconry, which is the ancient art of hunting with trained birds of prey. Their prowess in the hunting partnership with humans showcases their intelligence, agility, and their remarkable ability to strike with precision. Wow! This enduring bond between falconer and falcon has solidified the falcon status as a symbol of martial expertise and strength. In ancient Egypt, the sun god Ra was often depicted with the head of a peregrine falcon, symbolizing regal power, reflecting the falcon's grace, swiftness, and commanding presence. What? You're acting like you've never seen a bird's head on a human body before. Pathetic. You know what? I bet you Ra probably hangs out with Bastet, who's the Egyptian goddess with the head of a cat we learned about in the cat episode. If you like cats, go check that episode out. In Western Europe, this majestic bird was fit for royalty. Native Americans also saw these falcons as reputations of celestial might. And adding to its list of achievements, the peregrine falcon is proudly designated as the official city bird of Chicago due to its speed and beauty. So how quick are these birds? Does the peregrine falcon deserve the title of the fastest animal on earth? And if so, how did they achieve such insane speeds? Let's find out with some feature facts! Feature facts. Now you may think that pigeons are pretty resourceful when it comes to scrounging up lunch. But peregrine falcons are the master of finding food. And that is all because they are believed to hunt thousands of different kinds of species for food. In other words, if they can spot it and catch it, they're gonna eat it. I see you. Over 300 bird species alone have been hunted by peregrine falcons. And a high number of these deaths are in waders. Which is what you call birds that stand around the shoreline looking for food. Also, birds like sharp-shinned hawks, kestrels, 
and merlins are constantly taken out by these falcons. Now this feeding of animals hasn't stopped at the beach. Their range has extended to inner cities in recent years. So their diet is entirely different. 80% of this diet includes different types of pigeons, starlings, blackbirds, what? corvids, morning doves, northern flickers, and the common swift. Does it look like I'm afraid? Check this out. Whoa. See? Fearless. But wait! There's more. Now, mammals are not common in their diet. They do prefer the bird meat. But they are sometimes known to prey on mice, squirrels, <coughs> voles, hares, shrews, and especially bats at night. They've even been watched taking out small mongooses. What? I'm out of here. Size. Now the average size of these particular falcons can vary depending on sex and location. However, as a general guideline, adult peregrine falcons have a length ranging from 14 to 19 inches from beak to tail. Now in terms of wingspan, they typically have a length of about three to four feet. And it's this broad wingspan that allows them to soar efficiently through the sky. Now when it comes to weight, a female peregrine falcon is usually a little heavier. On average, a female peregrine can weigh around one and a half to three and a half pounds, while males weigh anywhere from 1.1 to 2.2 pounds. Now, the largest subspecies of the peregrine falcon is the Peel's falcon, which is found in the northern parts of Northern America. Adult females can reach lengths of up to 20 inches and have wingspans that are around three and a half to four feet long. Now, on top of being bigger, Peel's are often built thicker because they are usually found in colder climates. Got jokes. Joke number one. What kind of bull walks out of a construction site? A crane. Hey yo! <laughs> Joke number two. Why do birds fly south for the winter? Because it's too far to walk. Get it? <laughs> Joke number three. Why does a flamingo lift up one leg? Because if it lifted up two legs, it would fall over. <laughs> Duh! Family. Now, peregrine falcons do something awesome. They mate for life. During the breeding season, Male peregrines perform courtship displays to attract the attention of potential mates. They do this by being aerial daredevils. They'll go way high up into the sky and perform acrobatics, vocalizations, and impressive flight patterns, including showing off how fast they really are. Now once paired... Oh, I didn't know you were cooking tonight, darling. <laughs> Thank you. The happy couple establishes a nesting territory on cliffs or tall structures where the female selects the nesting site and they work together to prepare a shallow depression called a scrape. Now the female will lay a clutch of about three to four eggs. <laughs> which both parents take turns incubating for about a month. Okay, you guys all tucked in? Good, good, good. Okay, now it's time for PlayStation. Now after hatching, the parents diligently care for the chicks, both providing food and protection. And the young falcons grow pretty quickly as they're fed small pieces of torn prey. Around six weeks later, the fledglings begin to venture outside the nest, learning how to both fly and hunt under the guidance of their parents. Okay, I can do this. All right, let's go. Whoa, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. This process continues until they become independent and establish their own territories. Okay, I've been practicing. It's time to soar. Here we go. 
Uh, but throughout the mating season and beyond, the mated pair remain dedicated to each other, raising young together year after year. And if those little young are lucky, they will live a full life, which is around 10 to 12 years of age. Bro, stop hogging all the good stuff. Come on, mom gave that to both of us. You gotta share. Vision. Now, just to give you an idea of how great a peregrine's vision is, it's about eight times better than the average human's. These falcons' large eyes are great tools that help them survive in the wild. They can see as far as one mile and keep track of not one, not two, but three different moving objects at once. How do they do this? Well, within the eye, peregrines have a focal point on the retina at the back of each eye, which is similar to a telephoto lens. These are used independently of each other for viewing two different distance objects, one with each eye as they turn their head side to side. Shallower focal points in each eye work together to give the peregrine binocular vision, similar to how our eyes work. Therefore, they can keep track of one central binocular image just like we do, and two magnified images, one with each eye, which they switch back and forth based on how they turn their head. But you can't see out of the cockpit window when the glass is dirty. So to ensure these perfectly crafted eyes are kept clean and lubricated, they have a transparent eyelid called a nictitating membrane. This membrane can be rapidly drawn across their eyes to shield and moisten them, acting as a protective barrier against wind, debris, and bright sunlight. So not only do their eyes have a built-in telescope, but they also have safety goggles, windshield wipers, and sunglasses that all come standard with every model. Now it's time for Acting Wild with Zara. The Falcon. With Zara. Hunting. Now, one famous way peregrines hunt is a remarkable technique known as the stoop. Once they spot their prey from a high altitude, they go into a steep dive, tucking in their wings and plummeting towards their target at astonishing speeds. Now, in order to accomplish this, peregrine falcons need to fly pretty high. Now, on average, these falcons can soar at heights of around 500 to 1,500 feet in the air. But during their insane hunting dives, they can reach heights of around 3,000 feet and have even been witnessed performing the stoop from heights exceeding 10,000 feet. Man, that's high. Now, once the peregrine has reached its target, traveling at incredible speeds while closing the gap within a few seconds, they will usually ball up their feet and attempt to strike their prey in the head or the wings. Now, if that hit is successful, it'll take that unsuspecting bird out on impact. I mean, it's no infinite mass punch, but it gets the job done. However, if the prey survives the strike, the hit will still stun it causing it to plummet to the ground, which will usually take it out for good. But in the event that the first punch and the fall don't both do the job, the peregrine will land nearby and use its tomial tooth, a sharp structure on its upper beak, to deliver the final blow and snap the vertebrae of its prey. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do over here. I mean, a bird's gotta eat. You know what I'm saying? Speed. Okay, here it is. Peregrine falcons have been clocked at reaching speeds of 242 miles per hour while diving for prey. This makes them the fastest recorded animal ever. Now, if you think flying over 240 miles per hour is fast, <laughs> just wait. 
See, a few scientists got together and ran the numbers on this bird's skills and anatomy and discovered after some hard math that this bird has the ability to reach speeds of 388 miles per hour in high altitude flight. 388 MPH. That's about halfway to breaking the sound barrier. Literally halfway to traveling the speed of sound. So a couple of things that help these falcons reach such extreme speeds. Kathy, Oh, it's not coffee. But what does help are their specially pointed wings and their bone structure. Now, one major advantage they have is the size of their kill bone. This is the place where their major flight muscles are attached. These flight muscles are very powerful. And it is these muscles attached to that bone which the stiff feathered pointed wings are attached to. And speaking of feathers, like I said, peregrines have very stiff, compact wing feathers, especially when compared to other birds. This allows them to slip easily through the air with very little wind resistance. Mix this body shape built for speed, remind you of anything? And you have a bird that can generate a spectacular amount of force. And speaking of force, check this out. A peregrine falcon dive can generate enough force that they can theoretically snap the spinal cord of a human on collision. Fortunately, this has not happened in real life, so it's not something that you need to worry about if these birds are common where you live. Oh no, we would never do that. Or would we? Cardio. Why, hello there, Professor Glasses here, and word on the air current is that you want to know how falcons can go at such extreme speeds without passing out. Well, one big reason is that this bird has an extremely great cardiovascular system, and key to that system is its heart, which is relatively much larger in proportion to its body. Now this falcon's heart beats at an incredibly rapid rate, often surpassing 1,000 beats per minute during flight. Ah, oh, but their powerful large heart isn't all they have. Here, let me show you something. Now to cope with the high physical stresses encountered during rapid flight, peregrine falcons have been designed with robust and flexible blood vessels. These arteries and veins are built to withstand the extreme G-forces experienced during maneuvers and dives. G-force is the force you experience from the Earth's gravity. For positive G-forces, an untrained human can typically withstand up to 5 Gs for a very short period of time. This is because if they were to go any longer, they would lose consciousness due to blood being pulled from the brain and forced into the lower extremities, such as the legs and feet. Some fighter pilots who wear special anti-G suits and practice specific breathing techniques can handle up to nine Gs for short bursts without losing consciousness. However, even for these pilots, sustaining such high G forces for prolonged periods would be very detrimental. It could cause severe injury or even death. Many birds routinely experience G-forces greater than 10 Gs and up to 14 Gs while flying. But peregrines? Oh, they can handle a lot more. They can withstand up to 25 Gs. This is comparable to 25 times the force of gravity pushing on your body. Normal arteries wouldn't be able to transport blood very easily under these circumstances. But the peregrine falcon's arteries and veins work just fine to push their blood where it needs to go. So there you go. The reason that the peregrine falcon can fly at top speeds is because they have a cardio system that meets those needs. Here's 
something crazy? We already know that the peregrine falcon is an amazing bird that can dive really fast. But when it's flying so fast, there's a problem it needs to solve. You see, when we go really fast, the air can put a lot of pressure on our bodies, including our lungs. It's like when you blow up a balloon too much. It might burst, but the peregrine is built to handle this problem. It has a special part in its nose called a tubercle. This tubercle is like a little bony structure that helps the falcon breathe safely. It acts like a baffle, which means it changes the way the air flows. Instead of the air rushing into the falcon's lungs, the tubercle makes the air spin into a spiral pattern. This spinning air slows down before it goes into the falcon's nostrils. That way, the falcon can breathe easily, even when it's flying at incredibly fast speeds. So thanks to the special tubercle in its nose, the peregrine falcon can dive and fly really fast without any problem. Man, I want a tubercle. Now, as amazing as peregrines are at hunting, they face their own threats and predators too. Golden eagles love hunting these birds. And even larger birds of prey like goshawks or gerfalcons can compete or prey on weaker falcons. And let's not mention the nest predators like raccoons and foxes that like to take these falcons' eggs. And even the baby chicks. It all just goes to show you there is always going to be someone bigger and stronger than you. Just because you are good at one thing, like, oh, I don't know, let's say uh, being the fastest, doesn't mean you're best at everything. I mean, according to a BBC documentary film, only 20% of Peregrine's high-speed dives end in a successful kill. First try. Good thing they're built for endurance. They're gonna need it. And speaking of endurance, we need to get started on the next episode. That sadly means we need to end this episode and bring it home to roost. Oh, brother. If you enjoyed the show, then smash that like button. We have content coming out every day, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on all the fun. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on Laugh Pod. Done.